You know it, Vlad. You know that Hassan Piker! I'm coming to kill you! In Los Angeles! At your house! Or in the ring? No, in real life! 2022. <laughs> Anytime there's a mass tragedy or heinous crime, fans would submit Sam's pictures to reporters and news outlets. <laughs> oh my god! Back in high school, I had a friend who uh, was drawing dead people. Okay, was actually was there was a lot of people who were alive, and like he ended up drawing them dead. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> oh my god, this is crazy, bro. Danny. All right, yo. So I, I kind of want to talk about. Some guy named uh, Sam Hyde. Do you guys know of Sam Hyde? I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this guy, but this guy is something else. Yesterday, okay, now this the thing is that he's been around for a while now. I just never really paid attention to him, but I cannot escape his name. Like his name is literally in every single uh, For You page. Every single time I refresh it, his name is right there and there's no way I can eliminate it. So I decided to just click on it and to see what it was about. And I did, it did not disappoint. And I'm going to show you guys right now what I'm talking about. Is it this one? No, it's not this one. Um, where is it? Uh, 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 Sam Hyde versus uh, the world. This video was the one I saw. We, I'm going to show you, okay? Because uh, I think it's absolutely important that you understand the lore. Because it doesn't just end now. Where, where like he's currently uh, trying to face off with KSI. Just watch, right? I go through my day pretty normal like I'm a normal guy I'm a swell guy I'm a nice enough guy I'm a cool kind of guy <laughs> I'm a pretty groovy guy but then I get a little sugar in me and I start to go cuckoo Dostoev Kiev has a name and he has absolutely owned the Russian Air Force he had told them that he had a gun <laughs> employees quickly evacuated leaving the man alone inside it was reported to me that he's actually not from this community apparently his name was released to Sam Hyde <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> ooh, ooh, what's he gonna do now? What's he gonna do now? I was in Rwanda. I was a little, I was with a little startup you may have heard of, Tesla. You've probably heard of a mysterious <laughs> Irish boxer calling out Hassan Piker, or the ghost of Kiev valiantly defending Ukrainian airspace. You might have heard of Harley's trainer being banned from the iDubs Creator Clash event, or the Candyman winning a recent boxing match in London. What do all these people have in common, and what happened in the past to make him so controversial, and why is he one of the most polarizing figures on the internet today? Why is everyone talking? about Sam Hyde. And how does he do it without even having a platform? He doesn't have YouTube. He doesn't, I don't know if he has any other platform, but I know for a fact that he doesn't have YouTube. And it blows my mind that he's able to attract all this attention without using the, uh, the, the platform to get him there. Are we in the good timeline, Sam? We're about to be in the best timeline. Mark my words. <laughs> Sam is from New England and went to college at Rhode Island School of Design, the same college as people like Seth MacFarlane and James Franco. Sam wasn't a big fan of college and by the time he graduated in 2009 he was totally disillusioned with it, saying his dad had paid a quarter of a million dollars for him to study stuff he could have learned on YouTube. In 2011, over half of college grads under age 25 were unemployed. What? That doesn't make sense! The same year, Sam and his friends Nick Rochefort and Charles Carroll started a comedy group they called Million Dollar Extreme, or MDE. The group posted regularly on YouTube, and the content varied from Sam giving monologues on different topics to doing sketches as different comedic characters. But one of the most popular series the group posted was Kickstarter TV. Sam would find the most memeable Kickstarter people asking for money and then put them on blast for content. Coincidentally, there was another YouTuber with his own series at the time who was doing almost exactly the same thing. That YouTuber's name was Ian aka iDubs, and his series was called Kickstarter Crap. Reviewing all these Kickstarters gave Sam an idea. But it's not a scam. The whole plan from the get-go was to de deliver a game and have it be sort of laced with, um, like, MDE humor. MDE was making their own video game, crowdfunded on Kickstarter. They asked for $7,500 to make a My Little Pony dating sim game, and their intended target took the bait hoof, tail, and saddle. There's a lot of crap to sift through on this one, so buckle up. Dark Skies, an epic brony dating sim. Let's meet the ponies of Royal Pony Academy here in Sears City. Oh, wow, I was trying to read it. My name is Pumpkin Pie, and I'm the smartest pony in the whole school. 
Ian's video was the same as the rest of his Kickstarter crap series, a scathing dunk on who he believed to be some scummy people posing as indie devs trying to swindle people out of their money. What he didn't realize was that Sam Hyde and his crew were behind the whole thing. Sam then copyright claimed Ian's video where he talked about the game. Behind the scenes, Sam had offered Ian a way out. Sam wrote an email to Ian that he would release the copyright claim if Ian met certain terms, but Ian did not take him up on that offer, so the video stayed copyright striked. None of this was known to the public at the time, nor were the terms of Sam's deal, and to people not familiar with MDE, it just looked like disgruntled indie devs had striked a YouTuber out of anger. Ian would not forget this, and this interaction would come full circle many years later. After their initial success on YouTube, MDE started to expand their work into the real world. Sam somehow got into Rutgers as a guest speaker with a wig on and told the students that college is a scam. Another stop on their tour was at a Williamsburg weird Twitter meetup. Sam got on stage at the open mic and started reading off a bunch of unverified homophobic stats and quotes. At the beginning, the audience was laughing and clapping, but by the time they realized what was going on, they were in full revolt. The fact that OCD and bipolar disorder are, uh, <laughs> are, um, You're to be about and stuff. Um, so, well, I'm trying to get a message across here because I, I understand you guys have seen some funny stuff and maybe you're ready for some sort of thing that's, you know, a little bit more, uh, intellectual. I don't know, sorry. Uh, if you don't want to be disabled, go ahead. Well, I'm having a big laugh too, uh, just looking at you, man. Oh, have a nice damn. Night. MDE uploaded this routine to YouTube and call it Privileged White Male Triggers Oppressed Victims Ban This Video and Block Him. Even back then, the group was careful to put a message in front of the video clarifying that they weren't real homophobes. Probably the most famous of these in-person events from this area was the Philadelphia TEDx talk in 2013 at Drexel University. Sam told the panel that he was a filmmaker from Brooklyn whose work had been featured worldwide on Discovery, National Geographic, and had recently returned from Mogadishu where he was helping a women's group clean up the streets despite the violence in the city. But Real quick, I'm sorry. I just really want to check something. Um, is a uh, hate speech a crime? Uh, hate speech and hate hate crime. It's good to go. uh, I wish there was just like something that could just answer that real quick. But hate speech and hate crime. Hate speech, hate crime, hateful uh, conduct. Libraries, hateful conduct. First Amendment. True free expression, biased behavior, conduct. A hate crime is a crime motivated by bias against race, color, religion, nation, national, or to get to get whatever. Uh, hate speech covers many forms of expression, which hate speech covers many forms of expression which advocate, uh, incite, pr promote, or justly justify hatred, violence, and discrimination against a person or group. It doesn't. A person is guilty of a hate crime offense if he or she maliciously or intentionally commits one of the following acts behind because of his or her perception. Okay, so it, you would have to take action even after you commit the hate, hate speech in order for you to be incriminated. The talk was called 2070 Paradigm Shift. The reason why I ask is because, uh, you know, he's he's doing that in front of people, but I don't know if that's a crime. Uh, you, you already know how it is on YouTube and all these other platforms. They always want to just, like, go ahead and ban these people for speaking out. And uh, the way things are run on YouTube and the way things are run on TikTok, Instagram, is not the way it's run in reality. So I just wanted to see if they both uh, corresponded equally, but it doesn't, so shift, in which Sam lampooned TED Talks with pseudo-intellectual stories and dark jokes. MDE started to get media attention around these in-person events, and PhillyMag.com reported that TEDx Drexel had been pranked. It was also around this time that MDE's fanbase started one of the longest-running in-jokes on the internet today. Anytime there's a mass tragedy or heinous crime, fans would submit Sam's pictures to reporters and news outlets. <laughs> oh my god. They're sending pictures to the police. They're like, this is the guy. This is the guy who committed the crime and claim he was the prime suspect. Trolling journalists became something of an art to MDE and their fans. And this would become one of Sam Bill O'Reilly, Calvin Candy. That is funny, man. Defining characteristics on the internet. In late 2015, MDE let fans know they were pitching their sketch comedy to TV networks, and in early 2016, they finally got their big break. Adult Swim signed the trio to a 15-minute time slot with the name Million Dollar Extreme Presents World Peace. The show satirized anything the trio thought was funny, from 2000s emo band culture to office politics. It was irreverent, unhinged, and fit right in with Adult Swim's lineup at the time, which included shows like The Eric Andre Show and The Tim and Eric Awesome Show Great Job. World Peace was the highest-rated show on cable in its time slot, and had as many 
viewers as the Eric Andre show, making it a massive success commercially. But some of World Peace's sketches would end up getting them a lot of backlash. One article that's commonly attributed with kicking off the chain of events that led to the show's demise was released in August. It was titled, The Alt-Right Has Its Very Own TV Show on Adult Swim. In the article, BuzzFeed labels Sam as a quintessential alt-right Twitter user who supports Donald Trump, hates Hillary Clinton, and more. BuzzFeed called Sam for a quote for the article and he attributed all of the tweets and Reddit posts to his assistant. So, Sam, let me ask you a couple questions if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, do you consider yourself a member of the alt-right? Of adult night? Of the alt-right. <laughs> What is the alt-right? Is that some sort of indie bookstore? The show ended up getting canceled after just one season, but there was more to the end of World Peace than met the eye. Sam would call into fellow Adult Swim star Tim Heidecker's show to discuss the cancellation of World Peace. According to Sam, Tim had played a large role in getting World Peace shut down. So I don't, I've, I have heard that you campaigned to get our show taken off the air. I'm not, that is I'm wrong, not. Sam, and listen to me. It is wrong. Now I have expressed, I, like I've said on the show many times, I've expressed to people there and to people around me that that I've been, uh, you know, attacked online by people in your name. I don't know if it's you or whoever it is, but it's people saying, it's not, in, not fine. Me. okay, fine, it's not you, but it's people yeah. over and over again, a, a coordinated, consistent, nasty, <laughs> violent, no, listen, violent yeah. uh, death threats, all, this, all that shit coming at me. And all I said, all I've ever said to anybody about the subject was well, that audience, you know, has, 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 has like, you know, an issue. That has an issue that doesn't seem to be dealing with. Tim did later go on to admit that he had supported his friend at the network when he made a push to get World Peace canceled. But Sam uh, somehow argues with T uh, Tim Heidecker over World Peace cancellation. This was five years ago. That is insane, man. Like, I can't believe, like, you would want to... Uh, what was his, like, fan base at the time? I didn't get your show canceled. I just supported a friend closely in his efforts to get your show canceled. <laughs> so essentially, so essentially, you 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 uh you, you assisted in canceling the show, and he said you were a big part of it. So I wonder if you're trying to downplay it with words. I'm pretty sure that he probably had a bigger role in it, uh, because now I don't believe him. I don't believe Tim uh, Tim Heidecker anymore because now he's saying that he he just wanted to go support his friend in uh, canceling the show, like. Bro, what, like you lost our trust now, dude. I don't know what, what what this is supposed to. I mean, this exposes you to us as being somebody who will downplay anything just so you don't look bad. Just thought. But only because he supported that friend no matter what he does. Mm -hmm. With no Adult Swim show, Sam and the MDE gang went back to making YouTube content. Hey, real quick, I just want to share something with you guys, okay? Look, back in high school, I had a friend who uh, was drawing dead people. Okay, was actually was there was a lot of people who were alive, and like he ended up drawing them dead. And I had a uh, one friend, actually two friends, but one friend who wanted to go and snitch on him. Now the guy who was drawing dead people, I knew him personally, and I knew that he would never hurt a fly. And I actually talked to him, and I understood him. Uh, he never had guns or any of that stuff. He was never planning on shooting up everything. He was a really friendly guy, but he was just drawing his bullies, people who were mean to him, because that was his way of coping with what was going on in high school. This, I was with that guy who reported him. I was with that guy, and I told him, you know what, bro? I'm not going to go because I feel like I'm putting my friend in jeopardy. Like, I feel like I'm being a part of it, and I'm being a part of, like, putting him away. Um... If you take part in something like that, most definitely you're going to be a part of it. Most definitely. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter if you're supporting a friend. You're still there, bro. You're not talking any sense into him. So I felt like I would have betrayed him that day if I would have actually gone. And to say that you didn't take part in it, you definitely did take part in it because you're supporting a friend. So I don't know. Maybe he just stood there. I don't know. But at the same time. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he played a bigger part in it, especially because now we know that he downplays his own events. So it was during this time that Sam would pick up an allegation that follows him to this day. If you look up Sam Hyde on Wikipedia, one of the first things mentioned at the top of the page is that Sam Hyde donated money to someone named Andrew Anglin for his legal defense. Anglin is the creator of a neo-Nazi website called The Daily Stormer. In 2017, the Southern Poverty Law Center, acting on behalf of a Montana woman named Tanya Gersh, sued Andrew Anglin for doxing her and several other Jewish citizens of her town. According to Anglin, the doxing was in response to Tanya trying to extort a local woman for her son's political belief. Beliefs. Anglin hired an attorney and then raised $150,000 through online donations to pay for his legal fees. One of these donations had a familiar name on it, Sam Hyde. LA Times reporter Matt Pierce, one of these donations had a familiar name on it.
Sam Hyatt starting to really think something's up with these Jewish people. Everyone's talking about what's the deal with these Jews? Something's up. Huh. Interesting. Sam Hyde. LA Times reporter Matt Pierce reached out to Sam to ask about it. Here's what the article said. Hyde asked the reporter if he was Jewish and then boasted that $5,000 was nothing to him. Don't worry so much about money. Worry if people start deciding to kill reporters. That's a quote. For the reason why, you can say I want reporters to know I make more money than them, especially Matt Pierce. England ended up losing the lawsuit and Tanya was awarded a $14 million judgment. To this day, people debate if it was actually Sam at all who made the I like that Sam doesn't hold your hand and tell you that this is a joke all the time because that he'll always be a niche uh, that of uh, because of that he'll always be a niche thing. But I think he's okay with that and I respect that. And also, he didn't donate money to Daily Stormer. Someone did that claim to be him the same way he gets blamed for every mass shooting. I don't know if he play along, if he plays along with it or not. Yeah, I I don't know, man, but that it's crazy <laughs> that people want to like put his name into almost every controversy donation it could have just as easily been someone claiming to be him this is the internet after all where every it has never been confirmed if sam really donated that 5k possible uh, po possible someone donated that money knowing sam's reputation either he did donate it because he does align with the far right did donate it because he knew it would trigger certain people while maintaining the persona he has established uh and or Someone else donated the money and has never confirmed it was him or not him because he wants to always be in character at all times. More or less, keep K Fabe uh, alive. Yeah, I, I I probably would go with the second one. Did donate it because he knew it would trigger certain people while maintaining the persona he has established. Because I feel like that's something Sam Hyde would do. Like he's not ashamed to like back down from a joke. So mass casualty event since 2015 has been attributed to Sam Hyde, usually with all the comments saying he can't keep getting away with it. And trolling the LA Times is right up Sam's alley. One thing is for sure though, Sam was making more money than Matt Pierce during this time. Between YouTube and other outlets, Sam continued growing his cult following and creating content. This did not last long though, as the group's YouTube channel was banned in 2018, followed shortly after by their subreddit. Sam's conversation with Tim Heidecker a year earlier seemed prophetic at this point. As far as the mainstream internet was concerned, Sam Hyde faded into obscurity. I've had shows canceled. Everyone gets shows canceled. You can feel bad about it. Pick yourself up. Make no, I'm, shit. I'm, I'm blacklisted. I'm not canceled. I'm blacklisted. You know what that means, right? Over the next few years, Sam embraced being blacklisted. His fans spread his content across different channels, careful not to attract too much attention. He put out a podcast and other content behind a paywall for his loyal fans to tune into. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, a video clip surfaced where Hyde claimed that Idubs had flown to his home in Rhode Island to shoot a documentary about him. According to Sam, nine months had passed since the filming, and Idubs still hadn't released the documentary. In an effort to recoup the two weeks and $15,000 Sam spent to facilitate the filming, Sam said he was going to release the footage his people had. Once Sam and his friends finished editing, they dropped their version of the documentary in January of 2022. The next month, Ian released his version called Getting Away With It. Ian's intro ends with a reporter saying, if he's not the shooter, who is Sam Hyde? Presumably the goal of Ian's documentary was to answer that question, calling Sam mysterious and unwieldy. The documentary starts with Ian and his crew arriving at Sam's office and meeting Sam's crew. In his director's commentary, Ian says he was confused why there were so many people there and what their jobs were since Sam's videos didn't look like they had the production now you toy all these people. Later, Ian got to meet Sam's girlfriend, Danny. I do you stick a camera in her face immediately. That's my girlfriend that you're asking about. Hi. Please don't flirt with I dubs. Okay. Hi. You're Danny? Yeah. You look anemic. Look. Anemic? Yeah, a little bit. We look alike though. It's kind of weird. Ian said seeing Danny do drugs in the condition she was in was very sad. Later, Sam took Ian under an overpass to box. It was obvious that Sam had been training a lot and was taking boxing seriously. Sam would later claim that this little sparring session put the idea in Ian's head to do his own creator boxing match. Wait, well, who said who said that idea? Claim that this little sucks. It was obvious that Sam had been training a lot and was taking boxing seriously. Sam would later claim that this little sparring session put the idea in Ian's head to So was Sam claiming that he put the idea in, in Idub's head to create the creator clash. Okay, just want to clarify. Do his own creator boxing match. All of this climax is in an interview where Ian and Sam finally sit down face to face. Right out of the gate, Ian asked Sam a question he had been holding inside for seven years. Uh, do you remember our f first interaction? No. You don't? No. I have very bad memory though. Yeah. <laughs> Was it bad? You remember making a pony game? Yes. 
there were some creators at the time who made videos about this fake pony project. Why is Idubs talking to him like he's some little kid, bro? Like, be be straightforward with it. Yeah. Yeah. Were you one of them? I was one of them. What did I do? Do you have any guesses? Did I say fuck you or something? Uh, no, you you copyright claim the video. Really? Yes. <laughs> And then you sent me an email. I mean, I don't do I don't do most copyright claims. What did, what was what was the email? The email was, I will release the copyright claim on your video, if you can send me a video of yourself squatting, two hundred pounds below parallel. Why didn't you do that? You'd be so much stronger now if you'd done that. <laughs> yeah. Damn. A lot of viewers found this to be an awkward and confrontational. The interview has some of the worst vibes one can imagine. First, I'll confront you without knowing if I'm angry with you or not and try to have you resolve it for me. Then I'll ask you a list of questions. Way to start an interview. And many people speculated, including Sam himself, that Ian's real goal with the documentary was to expose someone who had fallen off, from adult swim fame to relative obscurity. Then Ian started questioning Sam about Danny, and Sam dropped a bombshell on him. Have you tried to get her any help? Uh, no, seeing as she's a girl, I paid $500 to shave her head and pretend to be my girlfriend. No, I haven't tried to get her any help. <laughs> so it's an actor. <laughs> Should you want me to try? Well, okay. I don't know her that well. It's probably not my business to get her off drugs. Also, I think I told her to put her hand in your pocket and pretend to be on drugs. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh my God, this is crazy, bro. Danny wasn't Sam's girlfriend at all, but an actress he had hired from a local community college. The office wasn't his real office, but one Sam had rented specifically to troll Ian. Everything Ian had filmed for the first three days of the shoot was an elaborate hoax that Sam and his crew had been planning for months. Sam's version of the documentary showed a completely different story from Ian's. They created a four page document on how to gaslight iDubs. <laughs> a song with the hook swag like high dubs oh. <laughs> stage fight over who gets to use the alias cream boy <laughs> even though they started making very similar content all those years ago the differences between who sam had become as a content creator and who ian had become as a content creator over the years were glaringly obvious after watching both versions of this documentary in one scene ian told sam when you're saying something serious you should tell the audience you're 100 percent serious. Sam responded by basically saying, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's treat the audience like they're idiots. Later in Ian's documentary, Ian put a chart on the screen explaining irony to his viewers. He explained that it was difficult trying to talk to Sam because he used meta irony to blur the line between sincerity and jokes. Sam's humor, on the other hand, exists on the complete opposite spectrum from Ian's, and he seems to revel in Ian's efforts to open Pandora's box. After both documentaries dropped, they both released follow-up videos and squashed any beef that there might have been between them, with Sam saying that he was grateful someone with such a large platform had featured him in his content. For a short time, relations were cordial between the two. And then creator clash happened. J hey, listen, I don't know about you guys, but just imagine that if like, if like uh, uh, Sam Hyde, if he ends up having like some heart attack or something that like just like painfully happens to him in the middle of like all these people that know him, do you really think that people are actually going to go to his aid? Or people are going to suspect that there's something wrong? Because I cannot imagine, like, a scenario where people will be like, Oh my God, is Sam, ha is Sam Hyde okay? Is he okay? He's suffering a heart attack. I cannot imagine that because he just doesn't take anything serious. I don't know, man. I feel like that's you're put, kind of putting yourself in a dangerous situation. I guess you could say that, like, you know, people aren't idiots, which is a way to, like, deflect. But I don't know. That's just something, like, there. there is, like, a blurred line there. And I think IDubs is uh, correct on that. I agree with him on that. Uh, but then again, I don't really know Sam Hyde like that. I don't know if he t ever turns it off or not. You know, when I say turn it off, I meant like his humor, his sense of humor. Does he ever turn off his sense of humor? I don't know. Just one month after Idubs posted Getting Away With It, he announced that he would be hosting a YouTuber boxing event called Creator Clash. Some of the selling points were the tickets would be half the cost of other boxing events, every purchase would support charity, and Ian also made a point to say that they weren't going to encourage the fighters to start fake drama for publicity. This was going to be a legitimate boxing event with properly matched opponents who were going to take it seriously and train for several months. The main card would be Idubs himself, but he said he didn't have an opponent confirmed to fight yet. People online immediately said Ian should fight Sam Hyde. But in a space on Twitter, Ian and his wife Anissa had this to say. There's been some talk of Sam Hyde getting involved in your event. Uh, could you speak to that? If anyone saw the documentary, getting away with it, uh, 
we worked with Sam Hyde for a period and it was tough. You know, he was wanting to put, put on his own show and he did, and it was funny, but, uh, he's not a super cooperative guy. He's very unpredictable. So involving him in our event just isn't a good idea. I it's think just most a people massive would business risk. I That's think just, most people would understand that. Yeah, it's a huge um, business risk. People on the internet generally were not happy about Sam not being allowed to fight. Sam found a way to become involved anyway by becoming the trainer for Harley from Epic Mealtime who would fight Game Grumps host Ego Raptor. Finally, the day of the big fight in Tampa came on May 14th, 2022. When Sam and his crew showed up, something unbelievable happened. Were you under the impression that you were going to be on this card at any point? No, I didn't think I was going to be on the card, but I didn't I didn't realize at any point that I was going to be blacklisted from a charity event that I bought five. I got five front row tickets. Uh, it was ten thousand dollars and it's for charity. And supposedly I'm going to be refunded this money. So I guess he he wants me not around badly enough that it's worth taking away ten thousand dollars from charity. That is crazy. You see, that's the genius of, of Sam Hyde. Like the fact that he knew that he kind of quartered him in his own game. Like he ended up paying $10,000. Who wouldn't want to donate $10,000 to charity, right? It looks good. But when he donates it, it's almost like he's putting Ian in a, in a corner. He's kind of like has him on a check and he has, he has his king on a check. And then he also has his queen on check. And now he has to like move his king and now he has to sacrifice, and now like the queen is gonna be taken. I feel like that was like a crazy move from Sam Hyde. And also, um, at the same time, I don't I don't know what his intentions are. I don't know what Sam Hyde's intentions are when it comes to that. He said he bought five of them. What, what do you need five of them for? <laughs> he probably bought five of them for like his friends, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But that's crazy that like he kind of like I don't know if he did it inadvertently or he actually did it on purpose, but. Uh, regardless though, I feel like if he did do it on purpose, that was a 4D chess move. Most people online were not happy that Sam had been kept out of the event, but others were more understanding. Even without his trainer present, Hardly ended up winning his fight via TKO. Creator Clash was a massive success, selling out the Youngling Center in Tampa, selling over 100,000 pay-per-views, and raising $1.3 million for charity. Even after being locked out of such a notable event, Sam wasn't ready to give up on boxing just yet. Just a few months later in August 2022, Dazen announced their undercard for the hotly anticipated KSI vs. Alex Wasabi fight. One fighter immediately stood out above the rest. Sam Hyde. Sam would be fighting musician and YouTuber I Am Thompson in London. Sam created a new character for this event, and in every training interview and video he did, Sam appeared as an angry Irish boxer called the Candy Man. Talk to me about this fight, Sam, and what you're going to do to this man on Saturday night. Oh, I done it. <laughs> Have you heard much Irish folklore? I haven't heard a lot, but I'm sure you're gonna tell me. Sam also made sure to call out popular political Twitch streamer Hassan Piker, saying he wanted to fight him next. Sam would go on to definitively win this fight, but it wasn't the win that grabbed the internet's attention. Oh, you know it, lad. You know that Hassan Piker, I'm coming to kill you in Los Angeles at your house. Or in the ring. No, in real life. 2020. <laughs> Oh my god, that was that was good, man. I was look, I had watched this clip yesterday and I could not stop thinking about that little clip right there. Like it was so funny, man. I, you should have seen me yesterday. I was just dying of laughter. It was too hilarious. Two has seen a massive return of Sam's popularity in mainstream internet circles, and people just can't get enough of the candy man. I'm sure we'll see him in the ring again very soon. Sam is like Schrodinger's comedian. The harder you look at him, the less sure you are about anything. You can put him under a microscope, try to ask him hard-hitting questions about what he believes, try to catch him in some kind of lie or gotcha moment, and he will look you straight in the eye, answer your question, and leave you even more confused than before. This confounds people like iDubs who probably see the humor in Sam's comedy and want to like it, but are afraid to be a fan of him just in case he actually holds controversial views. Personally, I don't think Sam wants us to care this much about who he really is or what he really believes. I don't think he thinks it's that interesting. In Sam's world, who is interesting is the ghost of Kiev and the candy man. In a lot of ways, Sam's jokes are about offensive, dark, post-ironic humor, and his punchline is the audience. So you gotta be thinking to yourselves right now, who's this 22-year-old kid up on stage with a chip on his shoulder and his heart on his sleeve and the world in his eyes? Well, that's a tough question, asking somebody to define who they are. I much prefer to ask, what inspires that person? What inspires you? 
If you like this video, you'll probably like my video I made about iShow Speed. Uh, I love iShow Speed, but we're not watching iShow Speed today. Um, yo, man, that is... I'm telling you, Sam High, dude. Like, I just became... I'm not a fan of Sam Hyde yet because I don't know what's up with him. I, I need to know more about him. But everything, every single time I see Sam High, like a new video of him, uh, I just... I'm a little more like... Damn, I started to become more and more of a fan of his. Let me show you this video, okay? I'm going to show it to you guys. I don't leave it in the description below. I highly, highly suggest that you guys take a look at it, which is this one. Sam Hyde, The Road to Hassan. The Candyman Has Arrived. This is an absolutely beautiful piece of, uh, of content. Take a look at this. Watch this on your own time. And it's just a bunch of people that are just... Because, like, Hassan Piker, the thing is that with Hassan, he kind of likes to, like, just talk. He talks a lot. And a lot of people don't like that. Don't like him. Don't like him because he does that. All he does is just talk and talk and talk. And not to mention that he won't even, like, if you have a problem with some of his beliefs, he won't even, like, look you in the eye. He won't even talk to you. You know what he'll do instead? God damn, like, fucking, like... You know what he'll do instead? Instead, he'll just talk about how you have no clout and you're just trying to chase clout and that you're a nobody, so why should he interact with you? Like, it's so annoying when I hear him say that shit. It's like, bro, like, have somebody challenge your ideas. Like, the whole thing with Andrew Tate, I thought that was pretty cool. But what about other people who have problems with your with your uh, belief system? Like Destiny. I've always wanted to see Destiny debate Hassan, but Hassan won't do it. You know why? Because Destiny doesn't have the amount of clout that he does. And only somebody who has a, a, the same amount of clout will he then interact with. And that's why I am glad that, Has that, that not Hassan, uh, Sam Hyde is kind of like putting him in this corner. I'm glad that he's putting him in this corner and he's doing everything he can to make sure that Hassan Piker understands that he wants to challenge him. That's why he's fighting KSI because he wants to gain that clout. So then he can just put it in front of Hassan and negotiate with that. Like, all right, I got this clout. What are you going to do now? What can you do now? Because I have the clout. You want clout. You say I have no clout that I'm irrelevant. Well, now I got the clout. What are you going to do now? You know, he's, he's like finding every avenue to corner him. And I'm happy. I'm kind of happy because... Uh, I feel like Hassan Piker, he's played, he, he kind of like, I remember Destiny ended up going to this forum, right? This board where like you have to use like pixels only, you can only use one pixel at a time per person. And I remember he had his dog there and everybody was just, all of Destiny's, uh, community went and they went to go, uh, erase the dog, his dog. And to be fair, that was his dog that had passed away, like, I think a week or two weeks before. But they had covered it up. And they ended up putting Destiny, or a big D, like the letter D. And he took offense to that. He's all, come on, man. No, not like that. I can't stand people like this. Like, he started just complaining about it. It's like, all right, bro. Well, now you got some guy named uh, uh, Sam Hyde, who you... I think he's even claimed that Sam Hyde is Nazi. Well, there you go, bro. You say you wanted to pun punch Nazis. And that's why I'm recommending you this video, the road to Hassan, the Candyman has arrived, because this will kind of like show you what everybody thinks about Hassan Piker. And not only that, it'll also show you clips of Hassan Piker talking about how he wants to punch Nazis and stuff like that. Well, people are calling Sam Hyde a Nazi. And I think that that's a great opportunity for him to go and punch a Nazi. So with that being said, guys, I think we're done with the Sam Hyde story. The whole lore um go, go check it out go check out this video on your own it, it's pretty funny i did not regret it. it's what like 14 minutes i would probably watch it with you guys but i i, I don't i don't i don't i don't want to watch it but nonetheless uh yeah i would rather let you guys continue the lore and then have you guys just follow it up so anyways yeah that's it man